In the 1960s, the Wu Suli boat song was sung all over China. It described the beautiful life of the Hajan ethnicity. This folk song gives sound to their pride in their ethnic culture and love of their hometown. At the foot of Jiajin Mountain, in the south of Heilongjiang River, lies a fishing village named Jiajin Ku. This village is located across the river from Russia and is one of the regions that is inhabited by the Hajan ethnicity. The houses are built with a stream in front of them and a mountain at their back. More than 500 Hajan people live in the village as if they were in a fairy tale world. Hujun comes from the Manchu language and it means the east or the lower reaches of the river. Since ancient times, the people have been hunting and fishing for a living in the basins of the Heilongjiang, Songhua, and Wusuli rivers. In a world inseparable from nature, a life of fishing and hunting by the mountains and rivers has forged the tenacious character of the people for generations. In the 1940s, the displaced Hajan people built their own village with the help of the local government. They have their own spoken language, but no written language. Over the years, stories of their ancestors have been passed down orally through Yima Khan. This traditional chant celebrates their creation legends, ancestral instructions, and tenacious spirit. Among them, the most exciting stories are those of heroism. <laughs> Heroes, or strong and brave men, are called Morgan in our language. When we come across difficulties or hardships, the Morgan would bravely step forward. They can save those who are in trouble. Men like that, strong men, who are not afraid to fight with outsiders, are called Morgan. Every person in the Hajan tribe dreams of riding on a condor and flying across rivers and hills to spread the stories of their ancestors, like the legendary Morrigan. Heroic characters have been integrated into the minds of the people through the chanting of Yimakan. <laughs> Yimakan plays an important role in the spiritual life of the Hajan people. It is not just simply telling a story. No, it is also an expression of reverence. Reverence for the heavenly gods, nature, and their ancestors as well. It tells the children of the tribe that through thousands of years, the heroes that they look up to are their guides in life. It also encourages them to be strong and brave in the face of nature, to assume responsibility, and to have the spirit of teamwork. Historically, the Hajan people fish in the rivers during the summer and hunt in the mountains during the winter. The men in Jijin Kuo learn survival skills from their fathers. According to their ancestors' tradition, it is common that boys endure the cold and hunger and face danger in the process of growing up. Through trials and experiences, they gradually develop an attitude of self-improvement. During winter, the temperature drops to 40 degrees Celsius below zero, and the Hajan people have to survive in a land covered in ice and snow. It is cold in winter, so this is how the Hujan people sleep at night. We shake the snow from the snow cap. Then we spread the roe deer skin on it. After that, we get our quilt. Then we fold it up to here. Here. And inside, we stretch our feet. 
We wear it like we... like we are in a sack. We wrap it all around us and sleep in it. For eating and surviving, we can endure any hardship. We must endure it. Hardship comes before food. According to the Yimakan, when the people are experiencing hardship, a magical force will help them. This force always appears in the image of a woman who is disguised as a hero's wife. Therefore, they believe women should also go through hardships when they are young. Many people know that fishing in the river is a skill that must be learned. In Jia Jin Kuo, there is a saying, small fish in the shoal water and big fish in the big rivers. To catch big fish, they must embrace the challenge that comes with big rivers. One time, my father went out fishing, and the waves were so big that day. Because of the waves, his boat was pushed to the shore. He had caught so many fishes, but they were all just washed away. Even the fishing nets were washed away. One of my uncles was little, and he fell off the boat and into the water. My father panicked. He jumped into the water to rescue my uncle. In Jia Jin Kuo village, Almost every family has had a dangerous experience while fishing in the river. Even during storms, the villagers still have to make a living and venture out with their fishing boats. They believe they must go against the storm in the summer and endure the cold in the winter to survive. We live by fishing and hunting. That was the life of our ancestors. If they did not go fishing, they may have ended up starving because they feared the cold or something else. That is why our predecessors or the older generation endured a lot of hardship and still went out fishing. Even if the weather was very bad, they endured everything just to feed their whole family. There is a saying, there are countless fish in the three rivers and infinite fish skin clothing. Unlike most regions in China, there are no silkworms or cotton where the Hujan people live. But with wisdom and intelligence, they are able to get other materials from nature. These warm clothes are made from the skin of fish. The tradition of making fish skin clothing is rather complicated. Today, Fish skin clothing may have lost its practical value in the lives of the Hanjan people, but this national tradition still carries important memories of the past for the tribe and their culture. Yuwu Wan Fan is 62 years old. Growing up, she learned to make these clothes from her elders. She has been keeping this tradition alive for more than 50 years. She intends to keep this old craft alive by passing it down to future generations. These are called wula. You wear them during winter. They can also be used for hunting. Just attach the wula sedge to them. Can they keep you warm? Oh yes, they can. What else is in there? These right here are the fishkin skirts we are currently making here. Um, back in the old days, women would wear these. You can still smell the fish. Yes, there is still a hint of that fishy smell. The smell of the fish skin clothes, which is familiar to the Hujan people, is that of the three rivers, and is a cherished reminder of their hometown. They say that fish are a treasure from which people get food and clothes. These clothes are the embodiment of their ancestors' wisdom and the history of the Hujan people. This is not only beautiful, but it's also auspicious. In the case of low productivity, they can survive in this kind of environment. They stubbornly fought against nature or adapted to nature during their struggle with it. This is the root of self-improvement for Hujan culture. Up to now, we can still observe the people perpetuating this culture. For the people of Jiejian Kuo, their heroes are fearless hunters of wild beasts, fishermen who courageously face the storm, 
and soldiers who returned victoriously from battle. The legendary Morrigan of Mandu went to battle on his horse to kill the enemy and save the entire tribe. His heroic spirit has inspired the Hajan people to take risks and be brave enough to stand up against intruders. In the Second Sino-Japanese War, Japanese troops invaded a large part of the land, but inspired by Morrigan, the Hajan people rose up in arms against them. All of this was compiled by a Hajan elder during the 1980s. He visited some of the elders who fought in the war and recorded the stories dictated to him. This one is about the Chisingan campaign. The Hajan army fought bravely and killed many Japanese soldiers. Brave and skillful. Yes, especially a man named Yu Shan and his brother Yu Jang. They killed nearly a hundred of them. They were hunters, and in the army, they do not call them hunters, but gunners. It's similar to snipers in modern society. And they led the army to fight for three days and three nights? Yes. So this just comes to show that the tribesmen are brave and skillful in battle. Yes, that is right. There are more similar stories. Cross the mountains with two plates and sail across the ocean with three. The Hajan people are able to go through mountains and cross rivers freely. In the Second Sino-Japanese War, they fought the Japanese army to save their land. Women and children sent ammunition to the anti-Japanese army and crossed mountains to pass along information. Meanwhile, the Japanese troops wanted to exterminate them, forcibly dividing them into several tribes and banishing them to the swamplands more than 100 kilometers away. Yuo Yifa is now 78 and remembers these difficult times. At the age of six, he was banished to the swampland with his parents. My parents and I were part of the three tribes that lived in the basement, and there were so many of us in there. The Japanese did not give us any food at all, so we had to look for a way out and find something to eat. So at night we would go out to the river, asking people we know for some food. We asked them for some corn bran. We even ate the corn bran that was meant for the pigs. We would eat anything as long as we could live. With few trained doctors and very little medicine, five of Yuo Yifa's relatives passed away. But the Hajan people still survived with their tenacious willpower. After their victory against Japan, their population dropped from 1,700 to less than 300. Although they are a small group, they still rely on the spirit of self-improvement for their strong vitality. Yes. Even though they're a minor ethnicity, they have made great sacrifices for the nation. Many Hajan people bravely fought against the enemy during that second war. Their stories were adapted into Yimakan. They became the Morrigan of their nation and are known all over the mountains. To the Chinese people, those who do not fear sacrifice and are willing to risk their own lives to fight against an enemy invasion and defend the nation deserve to be called heroes. After the war, the people returned to their ancestors' village on the riverside. With the help of the local government, villagers moved in to new traditional Hajan-style homes to live a peaceful life. The government has implemented favorable ethnic policies to encourage population growth. For instance, when Hajan people get married, if both of them are from the ethnic group, or if either spouse is, they will be encouraged to have a second child. And this is very beneficial for the population and economic development, and even the cultural transmission of the tribe. The support of this policy and stable security in Jiejin Kuo village have provided the basic conditions for the tribe's development. Thus, old traditions have been restored. 
According to their customs, women and children who have gone through a hard time should receive the most care and attention. This way, the Hujan people's sense of pride in their culture makes them value their bloodline and encourages them to continue it. Today, their population has reached over 4,600. Fishing in the river is an immutable Hajjan custom, which has been passed down through generations. The sacrificial ceremony is done in accordance with a traditional procedure, which is led by the shaman. People are grateful to the universe and the god of the river for bringing them generous amounts of food. This ancient ritual symbolizes the self-respect and confidence in the Hajjan culture. 49-year-old Fu Gang is a fishing master in Jiejin Kuo. He is a quiet man, but he livens up whenever he goes to the river. To this day, he still remembers the first time he went fishing with his father. I did not want to go, but he insisted, so I followed him. After we cast the fish net, we got so many fishes. He asked me that night what I wanted to eat. I said I wanted the big yellow croaker. It was five kilos. At that time, I liked to eat fish and play in the river. It looked bright and amazing. Casting and collecting. Working day after day, the Hajan people harvest their own happiness with great skill and delight. Fishermen who sail often feel relaxed and happy when they embrace the wind from the river and watch the rolling waves. When there is a storm, I feel good. Whenever I feel worried, I sail out here to fish. And I forget all my troubles. After fishing, we drink together and talk about fishing and fishes. In those times, I feel so comfortable. <laughs> After fishing, several fishermen gather and share a jug of wine. They all drink and enjoy the fresh fish. Having survived hardships makes them feel heroic, and they wax nostalgic in the small boat. <laughs> Chen Zhongzhen misses fishing and hunting, but he and other villagers welcome this change of pace. He leased a piece of land, learned to plant soybeans, and became a farmer. I planted less than a hundred acres. I do not know what to do at first. The other fields were clean after the insecticide was sprayed. We sprayed ours too, but it was too late. The crops failed. Good fishermen may have been able to sail through storms, but still have to face challenges that come with development. The heroes in Yimakan teach them that food and clothing are earned through one's own hard work. Chen Zhongzhen had never used a hoe but had to learn how to use it and other farm tools. Since he was used to using fishing nets and rigs, he was clumsy with the hoe. But he never gave up and kept practicing. In less than a year, his hands developed thick calluses and a dozen hoes had been worn out. Because of his inquisitive spirit, Cheng Zhongzhen has not only mastered hoeing and plowing, he has also developed a seeding method that saves him time and effort. I thought we were not born to fish, and we had to learn it little by little. So I believed I could farm if I was confident. Then slowly I understood how to farm from the other farmers. It was hard, but success is not easy. I suppose this is related to the tenacious spirit of the Hajjan people? Yes. For us, if we persevere, all of our efforts will be rewarded. After mastering these skills, 
Chen Zhongjun gradually expanded his farming plot. Having learned from his mistakes, he now harvests nearly 500 kilos per acre. Everyone refers to him as the grain master. He has finally succeeded at farming. How was the harvest this year? For 3,000 acres, the gross income is 2 million. The net profit is 8 or 9 hundred thousand. So it is a good harvest year? Yes, it is. Today, in Jiejin Kuo, more than 200 people like Chen Zhongjun have gone from hunting and fishing to agricultural production. In the fields of hope, not only do they harvest crops, but also joy. Thanks to the popularity of the Wusuli boat song, this small village on the Sino-Russian border has become a destination for domestic and foreign tourists. A museum in the village exhibits the traditions of the people. The fish skin clothing and the yimakan are listed as parts of China's intangible cultural heritage. During the high season, Around two to 3,000 visitors come to Jiejin Ko every day. They show interest in the customs and daily lives of the Hajan people. Because of this, the Hajan people in Jiejin Ko take pride in their culture. This right here is an example of how their cellar looks. The wicker basket is where they put their pancakes and acorn flour cakes. And the birch cabinet is for the fishkin clothes. You can see the three wonders in northeast China here. This is the window paper, hanging cradle for children, and the unmarried woman's smoke pipes. Yuo Xiu Yin retired from the post office and went back to her hometown. The museum was new at that time, and guides were needed. She devoted most of her life to postal work and did not have experience as a tour guide. But since she was familiar with Jiejin Kuo, she decided to sign up. I've been in this village for a long time. In fact, I was born here. And since I'm a native, I wrote my own speech for the exhibit. I would tell people about the Hutchin culture, so they would like it. I would talk about the Hutchin people's character, like how we have a simple nature, so they will appreciate the tribe. There is a saying, a man does not learn once he is over 50. Yuo Xiu Yin was nearly 60 that time and had a hard time. To make more people understand their culture, she had to work harder than others. Because of her love for her own culture, Yuo Xiu Yin eventually became a popular tour guide. And in the process, she was able to gain a deeper understanding of her culture. I actually feel proud of our people. For example, when our ancestors created a calendar and the fishkin clothing, the Hutchin tribe has a very, very small population. But we have created so many things already. I am proud of my ancestors. I'm also proud of our culture. That is why I want to share our culture and promote it to visitors so that many more visitors, domestic and foreign ones, will understand our culture. The clear and pervasive Yimakan sings of the pride of the tribe and their confidence in the culture of their people. With the many changes brought on by modern living, fewer people know how to sing the Yimakan. To make sure their cultural heritage remains alive, many old villagers took it upon themselves to teach the youth and created the seminar of Yimakan for young ones to learn how to sing it. Culture defines a person, a country, and a nation. We have culture because it defines us, to know who we are and where we stand. It shows us where we can go. The Hushan tribe has the spirit. They have the drive to improve. Night falls. People sit by the river after a long day of working, light a bonfire, and roast the traditional Hushan food called 
Kalaha. For thousands of years, the people of the Hajan tribe have perpetuated the wisdom of their ancestors and the spirit of self-improvement in the cadenced tunes of the Yimakan. Thus, the ancient culture of Hajan continues to flourish in this new era with vigor and vitality.